and it says that we are live. So with that, welcome everybody to my favorite day. Today, we are celebrate, celebrating Ben, Pastor Ben, completing the first phase of our program, Fighting for Your Family. And we are celebrating Daniel Cabral, his coach, and all the effort that he's poured into Ben in so many lives. So guys, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Proud of you for being here. Proud of you guys for being here. Ben, congratulations. Thank you, Dan. You're very welcome, sir. So um, I probably should I probably should introduce myself, shouldn't I? I am Damon Stoddard. I am the president and founder of Change University. Um, we started Change University on my 50th birthday, which is about three and a half years ago. Had no idea what was going to happen. I had a dream in my heart that I would be able to use my pain to help other people go through their pain and bear fruit for his glory. And I had no idea that we'd be here today talking with Pastor Ben. But Daniel was my first client a little bit right. more than three years ago. Had, we had no idea on that call, Daniel, did, did we, that you'd be coaching men and changing men's lives. We thought, we thought that in a couple months, you're going to have your wife back and life was going to be great, didn't we? I don't know what I was thinking three and a half years ago, Dan, but I just know that. I, I uh, watched your video, took a step of faith, saying something's got to be better than what I was doing. Because my, I was whatever I was doing was broken. So let's just start there real quick, Daniel, because um, God has built Change University. We just trust the Holy Spirit, just like we're going to trust the Holy Spirit here. But before we get to you, Ben, I want to celebrate Daniel, because um, what's changed in your life since making that decision three and a half years ago, Daniel? What's different today? Well, three and a half years ago, I had zero self-esteem. I was broken down. Um, I didn't know how I was going to move forward in any aspect of my life. Uh, I was facing having to raise two little grandchildren, one in diapers at the time. I had to raise them alone by myself. And I was, I was at the end of my rope. I didn't know if I could continue. Uh, now, today, um, full of joy, full of peace, excitement. I have an enormous amount of self-esteem, um, knowing that God is with me and knowing that I can do anything I put my mind to. And as long, you know, obviously, you know, you know, in putting it towards the Lord, I can do anything. All things are possible, the Bible says. And I've got two little girls that are growing up knowing the Lord and, you know, already professing faith in Christ at their age six and eight. So my life has done a complete turnaround. Um, from where I was three and a half years ago, I am not the same man I was. And does that mean that your life's free of pain, Daniel? Oh, absolutely not. I still have lots of struggles and issues that plague me every day. Um, but I've learned from how, through how the Bible teaches us, through what God has taught us through his word and the leading of the Holy Spirit. I've, I've, I've learned how to um, take the problems each and every day that come at us and how to, uh, how to basically process them correctly how to place them where they need to be put things in, in my life systems in place that allow me to make the best decisions from, from me especially from a biblical standpoint how do i how do i respond how do i live how do i make choices um this program has taught me how to do so in a way that um that shows the love of god towards others and the people around me and um i mean i and it's, it's, a, it's a different way of living life, that's for sure. Daniel, would, would, it, would, it be, would it be fair to say that you have learned to believe with all your heart, James 1, 2, through 4? Consider it joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect results, so you'd be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Would it be fair to say that you actually believe that now? I don't just believe it, I live it. <laughs> it's your life scripture, isn't it? Amen. Yeah, so proud of you, Daniel. Well... I'm proud of you, and I, I want to honor you. You, um, just for everybody that's listening, Daniel made the decision to raise his grandchildren and to give up everything to raise his grandchildren so that they wouldn't have to go through what, what he's gone through. And he pours into those girls like nobody I've seen, sacrificially giving everything he's got. And he shared earlier that those girls profess their faith already, and they are going to have an incredible life because of the investment 
their grandchildren will have an incredible life because of your investment. So thank you, Daniel. Thank you. You're welcome. And now we're going to shift to Ben. Thank you for letting me edify your coach. Not only are you caring for your grandchildren and coaching your grandchildren, but you're coaching pastors now, Daniel. That's how God saw fit to put it together. And uh... now, isn't that isn't that crazy? Now, here's a guy that was that like a few months earlier had said, "I don't think I can do this." Damon, I don't think I made out to be a coach. And I said, I think you can. You just got to trust God. And you made a decision to trust God. And you're on a phone call one day, and this guy starts talking to you. He says he's a pastor. How do you, how do you help a pastor? I'm not a pastor. I don't yeah, how, is, how, am I, how is a non-pastor going to help a pastor that's struggling? Well, I guess when we are weak, he is strong, and you trusted God. It, but, Ben, I want to go back to that time. Because that wasn't the first call that you had scheduled, was it? No, it wasn't. It wasn't the second call you had scheduled, was it? No, I, I believe it was the third. It was the third call. Did you talk to anybody else before you talked to Daniel? Well, the first one I skipped. The second one I signed up for was with uh, Bill Schultz or Schultz. Yeah, we season. don't need to. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, but uh, he's that. Uh, and, and I talked with him for about maybe. Yeah, yeah, minutes. yeah. And, and then, then you I, scheduled. And then you scheduled. Yeah. And then I just, I didn't, uh, as Dan calls it, it's NEP or not enough pain. So I guess at the moment I talked to Bill, I wasn't enough pain. So I went back and I watched that, uh, the 45 minute infographic that, uh, um, you know, the, the God hates divorce. And I, I was like, there's something, am I missing something here? And buddy, after I watched it that third time and I talked with Dan or, it's like, or I knew it's like, okay, I, I've got to do something. And so I talked with Dan and after, I spoke with him and I mulled it over for about three or four days. I called back and I said, let's do it. Pulled the trigger and said, let's go. You did. And I, I think when you and I talked, I remember you saying that you were screenshotting my webinar. I was. <laughs> you, were, you actually not only screenshotted my webinar, you screen recorded my webinar and watched it a couple extra times. I did because I didn't know, I didn't know where to find it. I didn't find it. <laughs> and uh, the only time I ever saw it, it just it would like randomly show up on my feed on Facebook, and I never knew where to find it. Oh, uh, that's awesome! So <laughs> I, I after, think... I, after I, think... I saw it one more time, I, I, I scheduled, I, I clicked so that I could watch the link again, and then set it up to where it played on the screen next to me. And then I just and then I just re recorded. I just made a video of what was on the screen and ran the uh, ran the sound through a a. Uh, um, a, 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 a mixing piece of software that I, or a mixing piece of hardware I have here. And, and then I took the, uh, took the video and I took the sound and I put them together in uh, windows video makers. <laughs> so I could have the one file. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, just, I, I forgot to tell you that that's copyrighted material and that you can't do that. So I got to kick you out of the program. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's, <laughs> You had you have my word that I didn't distribute it to anybody for anything. I, wait, no, don't distribute the very webinar that's changed dozens and dozens of lives to more people. Wouldn't want to do that, would we? Well, I mean, I did distribute it because I was afraid I would be kicked out of the program. So <laughs> Sorry, everybody. I, uh, laughter is good medicine for the soul. I, I think what here's the message. Here's the message of that, and the reason why I wanted to go in that is because um, you got to want to change. Yeah. Right? You got to go all in. Because the work that it takes to change, it, it's not easy, is it, Ben? Is it, Dan? No. In it's fact, really it's hard. really hard. In fact, we say pain drives change. And correct me if I'm wrong, but we don't reduce your pain when you join Change University. No. In fact, we probably elevate your pain, not because we want to hurt you, but because the things that you're doing are going to cause you more pain in the future, and we put a stop to them. Am I right? Yeah, it's like, it's, it's like, I mean, the, uh, <laughs> I never once experienced any kind of beating, so to speak, or anything like that, but it's like, it's like I could equate it to the conversations that we had were meant to catch my attention. 
and to and to address it and, and correct it now so that I would avoid even worse pain in the future down the road. Yeah. If it was just if if my actions were enabled instead of disabled. Yeah, and I, I remember some of those conversations in the bit beginning, Pastor Ben. Mm -hmm. Can I call you Pastor Ben? Yeah, I mean it's those conversations in the beginning were, were um, and first of all, before I go there, I am so proud of you for being obedient and listening, listening to Christ and saying, okay, there's something here. I know there's something here. And for having the courage to do it, man. Yeah. Right. I, I make joke, all that kind of stuff, just because I thought it'd be kind of fun for people to hear the story. But your decision to fight for your family was not a, was a wholehearted decision. Yeah. It was a wholehearted decision. And guys that are listening to this, it takes a wholehearted decision to fight for your family. Because what you learn when you're in Change University is as much as you'd like to say it's her fault and these are the things she's doing, doesn't fly here, does it? No, God calls us to be the leaders of our homes, right? He calls us to be the leaders of our families and the buck stops with us in our family. Am I right? That's absolutely right. It doesn't, and, and every time you come in and say, yeah, but you don't understand, you don't know what she's doing. What do we say, Ben? <laughs> we're not focused on what she's doing. We're focused on what you're doing. Doesn't matter. No. Doesn't matter. Don't care. Did we ever have to do that with you, by the way? When you were spending all your energy focused on your wife? Because just for everybody that's listening, the name of the program is Change University, right. not Change her university. <laughs> I, Smile, buddy. Tell us the truth. You're a pastor. You got to be honest. <laughs> no, I, I'm trying to think because I, I, I'm trying to think how to compare it because it, like I've seen extreme cases of, of uh, other clients that were removed from the chat and removed from everything to, to de-escalate the situation because of how... Uh, how uh, aggressive they were getting about everything. Like I, I never got to that point. I think I got to a point to where I inadvertently pitted two coaches against each other. <laughs> How about that one? Wait, all the tree, all the secrets are coming out now. Yeah, I, I, I think it was, um, and maybe not necessarily like pitting coaches against each other. It was just a uh, um, when, when you have a multitude of counselors. You know, when it talks about you know the uh, wisdom is in a multitude of counselors. Anytime that you, you have multiple people talking, and, and especially as, as a diverse background, uh, whether it's somebody who's brand new or somebody who's been, you know, walking the, the, the Christ life for 70 years, you know, you've got uh, unique experiences that everybody comes from. And there's always going to be, when it comes down to the absolute nitty gritty, somebody is going to follow one side of the correct way or what they think is the correct way. And somebody else, and, you know, somebody else will follow on the other side of what they think is the correct way. And those two, Opinions may not uh, may not mesh well with each other. They may stand apart, but because of having all the facts, it helps to be able to move forward. And so maybe that's what not necessarily pitting two coaches against each other, but hearing two. Way to dig, your, way to dig yourself out of that hole. <laughs> well, here's the truth. You said there's wisdom in many counselors. Here's the truth. Yeah. Um, and I, I think you shared this, Daniel, but the truth of the matter is we've realized there's wisdom in many counselors and just a week or two ago, we made a decision to change our whole format mm -hmm. to intentionally introduce you to many counselors because the, the counselors or the coaches in change university are as diverse as it gets. And they bring every one of them, bring, them brings their own perspective. And it's through all of those perspectives that we're going to actually become whole in the person that God created us to be. Right. So, so did you ever uh, just answer ask the question kind of straight up did you ever um get the feedback that you were spending just a little bit too much energy focusing on your wife and not enough focusing on yourself yes and what did you what how did that feel when you got that when you got that feedback well the first time i shut the phone off and threw it across the room Oh, you threw you shut the phone off and threw it across the room because you didn't like what you what you heard. I, I bet you God didn't uh, let you go then, did he? No, 
What happened? What happened? Well, I think it was uh, probably maybe four hours later, I turned my phone back off and I messaged my coach. I was like, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I am still learning how to manage my emotions. Uh, thank you for what you said. Thank you for the direction you're mm. providing because I know that it's coming from a place of care and I know it's coming from a place of help and it's not coming from a place of criticism and condescension. Ooh, I love that. Wow. Perfect fear cast. Perfect love cast that all fear. Yeah. What can I tell you the secret, Ben? Yeah. Well, I mean, you've told me multiples. <laughs> well, I, I, I tell all secrets on these Facebook live interviews. Here's the secret. I never had to do that to Dan. <laughs> 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 and trust me, he never threw the phone across the room. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> it only took Dan three years to figure it out. It, how long did it take you, Ben? Uh, about three weeks. No, I'm kidding. It didn't take it didn't take that long. But I will say, I will say that. Um, the more we grow, mm -hmm. the more God reveals those that that next thing that has to be dealt with, and that's what I love about Change University is we've built a foundation of love, and psychological safety, and accountability, and courage, and commitment, and as a result, it's changing people's lives. So I want to go into this. First of all, thank you for being honest about throwing the phone across the room. I didn't know that about you. And thank you for being teachable, right? Because I want to fast forward a little bit and then I'm going to go back a little bit to the story. But unless I'm mistaken, you almost finished the coursework in like two weeks or something like that. Am I right? You just came in and said, you know what? I'm going to get the coursework back so I can get my wife back. Yeah. I mean, I, I knocked out. Um, I think I was at week eight within... 12 days. Within 12 days? Yes. <laughs> this is awesome. You know what? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through the coursework and I'm going to get my wife back. 12 days. Well, I mean, I was hungry. I, I, I knew something needed to be fixed. I was, I mean, I, I was, I was, in, I, I was interested to see how everything was and what was going on. And, and I knew I was going through it too fast, but I, I, it was, I, I was learning so much at each visual <laughs> one. That I could not put it down. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Well, so, so I, you know, no, no harm, no foul, but nobody's ever gone that fast. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> and then Daniel came, comes in, he's like, yeah, he's almost done. And what do they say, Daniel? Stop him and start him over. <laughs> I said, stop him and start him over. <laughs> well, I, that, I, I, that was that was the moment. That was the moment that I, I turned the phone off and threw it across the room. <laughs> <laughs> we never had to do that either, Ben. By the way, we never had to <laughs> stop somebody and start him over. <laughs> how much, how much oh, more did you learn the second time? Oh, I, I think it just it, it was more. As I went through and I rejournaled everything that I was uh, yeah. um, comparing, what uh, comparing both of my journals uh, that I was taking, about ninety percent of each journal had the same information. So, like like ninety percent of what I took was present in both journals, and I think it was just it was when I went through it the first time, I was fully thinking of it of like, okay, this is everything that's happening. This is. This is what I've done to make my wife mad, or you know, I, I, I'm doing this because I want to change for my wife, and this and this and this and this. And so when I went back and started working through it again, I changed my perspective. And instead of wanting to change for my wife or to change for my kids, my motivation was I want to change for myself. Because if I if hey, I don't intrinsic motivation, go. if I don't have the intrinsic motivation to change then there's nothing that's going to be, you know, uh, nothing from um, extrinsic, you know, external factors that will be there strong to help me uh, keep pushing forward. So apologize. I'm, I'm, my battery's going dead. I'm trying to plug in my computer there. So, so thanks for your honesty, Ben. Here's some, here's what the way I like to say it and think about it is 
for the people that are watching this, my guess is most of you have seen Facebook ads that say, you know, give us a call and we're going to save your marriage, right? And most of you think that there's a magic pill that you can take that is going to save your marriage. And what you're going to find is you're going to sign up for these programs and you're going to pay thousands of dollars, right? Because you're going to be, there's going to be an expert salesman on that call. It's going to convince you to pay thousands of dollars. And if you just pay this thousand of dollars in, in eight weeks, your marriage is going to be saved. And they're going to, and you're going to join a program that is void of human beings. You're going to join a program with a bunch of head knowledge, right? right. And what we learned in change university early on is no amount of head knowledge is going to, is going to save your family, your marriage. It's heart change. It's heart transformation. And our program is structured to enable heart transformation because here's what we've learned. Most of us get to the places we're at because we had childhood trauma from somebody that maybe was in a position to love us. And that childhood trauma comes out when we're adults. But what we've learned is that trauma that is caused in relationships can only be healed through relationships. Let me yeah. say that again. Let me say that again. If you think head knowledge is going to save you, it's not. It's heart transformation. Knowledge or, or trauma that is caused from relationships, and by the way, all trauma, most trauma is, can only be healed through relationships. And so Daniel experienced that change. And Daniel said, you know what? I love Ben enough to tell him that it's not going to work this way. To hold him accountable, to get into the heart of the matter. Am I right? Absolutely. And you, Ben, had the courage to accept that feedback. And as a result of your courage to accept that feedback, you did some hard work. You continue to do hard work. And here you are, right? Yeah. So I know I, I was talking a lot about that, but I, was, I, I wanted to kind of edify you and, and Daniel in that process because Yes, we do discipline you. Absolutely. Yes, we hold you accountable. But in fact, let me see this. We discipline you, we hold you accountable, and then we ask a question every single week. How safe did you feel in sharing and being transparent? And I use that feedback. Don't I, Daniel? Yes, sir. That feedback tells me if the culture in Change University is completely safe for you to be vulnerable and transparent. And if it's not, what happens, Daniel? We got to quickly make a change. The, coach has, to, the coach, coach has to reflect and say, what is going on with me yes, that I am not safe for my client? to be transparent because it's only through safety. It's only through safety to be fully transparent that we can heal. Right. All right. I never talked about that before, but now we're going to go back to the pastor part of this thing, because this is the magic of this story. The magic of this story is that a pastor also has problems. A pastor isn't perfect. Yeah. But here's what we've learned, Ben, through you, is that most pastors do not have a place where they can say, I'm not perfect. Am I right? Yeah, you're very right. And what ends up happening? We build ourselves up an island. 
And because we isolate ourselves, we don't talk to anybody because we don't talk to anybody. We start doing stuff that we're not supposed to be doing. And then we feel shameful for doing that stuff. But because we don't have anybody to talk to or anybody to confess to, we, we, we just keep doing it because it, it's weird. But, well, Lord, if I told somebody that I'm doing this or that I'm struggling with this, I mean, like, you know, I, I would end up losing my ministry. So it's just, it just keep quiet. So we have a word for that, don't we? It's called shame. Yeah. You end up living in shame. Just like Adam and Eve li lived in shame and hid and first covered themselves. I think that's what you just said. As a yeah. pastor, I struggle. But because I was a pastor, I had to cover myself to protect me. And then we kind of hide because if we come out in the open, what will happen, Ben? We oh, might yeah. lose our job and our livelihood. Yeah. What courage does it take for you to be sharing your story with so many people? Wow. Wow. Yeah, you talk about a lot of courage. That, I, I will say this, too. I will say this. I'm also, I, I feel like I'm also in a very unique uh, situation as well because um, I also, within, within my pastorate, within the, the connection, the Methodist connection that I'm part of, I do have uh, a, uh, a supervisor that, you know, like I could talk to about some things. Yep. And I, I, I was, the whole reason I joined this was because, you know, losing my marriage and stuff and all these struggles I was having. And I have never once felt like I could not talk to him about my struggles. Yes. And because of my struggles and being able to share with him and, and you know, not, um, you know, because he's my supervisor, you know, respecting that. But, you know, the fact that I've been able to keep him in the loop about everything I've been struggling with and what I was Amen. doing, I felt, also, you know, built us. Uh, built us a more professional relationship on top of our friendship as well to where I, I've, you know, he, he knows I'm not trying to hide anything from him. And, yep. uh, and so, you know, because of that, he, he's, uh, you know, he, he's, I don't want to necessarily say he's got my back because I mean, if I did something illegal, obviously, you know, he would need to, <laughs> you know, but, uh, but because I, I'm not sharing what I'm struggling with, you know, th you know he's, he's got my back when, uh, yep. you know, other, other people start asking questions or start, you know, trying to poke, poke uh trying to poke the bear or something you know he's he's ready to crack a whip and keep people from poking me so it, thanks yeah. for pointing that out ben because um i think you're in a pretty unique position right and give me just a sec For the pastors that are watching this, um, you don't have to act like you don't have real problems. You don't have to lie to yourself. There are places and people that can help you, but you're not gonna you're not gonna get any better as long as you're hiding. It's not going to happen. So if you're a pastor and you're watching this, we'd love to help you. Because what we've learned through Ben is Ben's not the only pastor <laughs> with these problems, right? In fact, I think that we've kind of uncovered a systematic problem that a lot of pastors might have these problems because they can't share. And part of our heart for the future of Change University is to come along pastors like we've come alongside you, Ben. Wasn't it awesome? How long did it take you to realize, Ben, that you were in a place where you didn't have to put up the walls and act like everything was okay? How long did it take you to realize that? To take, to, you know, to... Uh... When I made the full re realization, it was probably about five or six weeks into the program. But um, I think Dan will tell you that, I mean, from, from day one, the, you know, when it came to talking about what it was I struggled with and stuff, it, it was, um, I think I had more, I had a harder time trying to, you know, uh, work with the, uh, work within the, the confines of, um, you know, some of the guidelines, so to speak, that the program has. Not wanting to give away the names for those or any of the acronyms and stuff like that. Uh, the 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 application of the guidelines was more frustrating than it was trying to be open 
but I did not fully realize how safe I felt until probably about five or six weeks into it because I knew if I didn't, if I wasn't completely open about what I was struggling with, I wasn't going to get any better. But like I said, it wasn't until about five or six weeks into the process that I finally was like, okay, I'm not just doing this just because I'm trying to feel better. It's like I'm, I'm talking about things that aren't just program related. Like I feel safe talking about aspects of my life. And yeah, and that was a huge step. Probably everything. That's the breakthrough. Yeah. That's the breakthrough. You're no longer alone. Right? Right. And correct me if I'm wrong, and if you can't share, please just say I can't share, but didn't, didn't your um, denomination, the leadership of your denomination notice something profoundly changed with you? Yes. Well, I think the, <laughs> the local and the conference leadership of my, con of my congregation or of my denomination, uh, when I first started this, they were hesitant because they were, you know, just speaking op openly and honestly about it, they were afraid that that, this, that uh, Change University might be one of these companies that's out there, kind of like you talk about a lot of academic knowledge, no ethical or, or no applicability of anything, and, you know, mooching people for, you know, upwards of five, six, seven thousand dollars, you know, that, and uh, were afraid, but, uh, but my, uh, my direct supervisor, my district superintendent, um, took a step of faith and helped me pay a quarter of my tuition and mm. has, a, I mean, has recognized, wow, this is a huge change. Like, I mean, he goes around, I, I went to go meet my two new churches because I, I, I'm leaving this, I'm actually in the process of packing up and moving. I'm supposed to be moving tomorrow. So, um, but uh, when I went to go meet with my two new congregations that I'm serving uh, before he even let me talk about anything was, uh, you know, just he, he informed them of, you know, this is where I was coming from. This is kind of some of my background. And um, that here, here are some of the things, uh, here are some of the, the issues that he has struggled with. Not necessarily issues, but just some of the, the, the seasons, I guess you could say, like this is what he's currently dealing with in this season of his life. However, I can tell you right now that this is something that's not torn him down because I can see the growth that he's done a lot of work. He's done a lot of self-growth and everything to, uh, to, to come out a lot stronger on the other side. And... Um, and that just, that, the last I, <laughs> the last we talked, there, there's a potential that you can kind of help other pastors because yes. of your struggles. Am I right? And yes, I don't want yes. you to share too much information if you can't. I don't want to put you in that position. But, um, wouldn't that be amazing if a pastor who has begun a journey a lifelong journey of healing mm -hmm. pour into other pastors who are struggling with the same thing what what's wonderful uh the the um the last time we talked about what was talked about it's modified a little bit since then but uh the what it's modified to is that it, it's it's more of a because of the the changes that i've made in this program and what i've done and and especially like the self-reflection that we do every week when it comes to the group mm -hmm. meeting um, I, I did not catch it at first, but the, um, the, the reap process that we talk about, uh, is, um, it is, I want to say it is divinely coincidental that it lines up almost perfectly with the way that John Wesley, who is like one of the founders of Methodism, um, set up the small group meetings. Like when they would get together, like the, the bands, and the, <laughs> they called them like, like discipleship bands. And when they would get together to talk about the scripture, you know, they had to have the meeting stuff uh two two of the questions two of the big questions was uh is like how are you doing as in like how is it with your soul and then the next question was like how is your doing so it's not just mm -hmm. it's it's focusing on the whole um like when we talk about making sure that we're you know that we're loving ourselves that we're pouring into ourselves the way we need to is that it's like, like how, how are we showing here or is like how are we experiencing love this way so that we can then pour out that love to others so i, I didn't know if you were aware of that but since we brought it no up, it was holy spirit inspired i can tell you that yeah. it's like most almost everything in change university was right. holy spirit inspired but you, you like my if you can see it you like my ginormous i like uh, it i like it a lot so um can, hey, Dan, can i ask him a question Ask me a question? 
No, Ben, I want to ask Ben a question. Oh, I thought you were going to ask me a question. You can ask me a question, sure. You can ask well, Ben a question, too. I think it goes along with the question you were asked. Ben, are, um, were you asked to were you asked to be a, a chair leader in some in a in a in a, a group? Was it some kind of to be a? Yeah, I was asked in the initial conversations, and then um, they decided that it wasn't going to be a, a conference level thing. They were just going to move it down to the districts. So, but the, other than that, that's about that's about the rest I can talk about it at the moment. Okay. Yeah, I'll just say this. Here's here's my Uber point, and this is one what, what I want everybody. To to see to see um you'll know a tree by its fruit right and we it, it, in change university i was saying we have a saying which is um don't listen to their mouth while watch their feet because their actions their feet represent their actions and where their heart truly is and so a lot of people in ben's uh, church world in, in his denomination saw Ben's feet move and it was so inspiring to them that they said we want to help we want to open up doors for you to help other pastors because the change in you is so profound that's the that's the message that I want everybody to hear and that wasn't head knowledge that was heart knowledge that resulted in a different direction of your feet that's quite a, that's quite a compliment it is. Congratulations, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. <laughs> you having fun, man? I am. I am. I'm having a lot of fun. I'm. I'm enjoying talking about everything. It's helping me to, um, you know, as as we all three talked about before this meeting. You know, we we've had some struggles these past couple of days, and uh, but I mean, just just talking about this is it, helping me. It's helping lift my spirits because. I'm saying, yeah, here it was, you know, all these things that's just struggling, but look at everything that I, I can look back and, and be able to objectively identify. I think that was a big thing. A lot of the frustration with stuff within this program is that I looked at it from such an objective standpoint when it comes from like looking for empirical analysis and empirical data and stuff based upon what, you know, how this or what's this result, this and this. It, it, it's, 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 um, I was focusing too much on the analytical side of things instead of relying on the mystery of <laughs> of uh, the mystery of God moving. Well, let, let's, let's it. get it. Let's get analytical. Let's get analytical for a sec. You joined the program. Are you a changed man? I believe I'm a changed man. Yes. Um, how has this impacted <laughs> your relationship with your kids? Uh, I, my son and my daughter both greatly enjoy their time with me. And uh, I mean, it's we we've started playing so much to where I'm gonna have to get to the point where like okay, like I have to I have to explain to them here is the dedicated time to play during the day because if we just play, we're never. Did you never, ever do? Did you ever do that before Change University? No, I didn't. Wait, you no, didn't play? You didn't just play with your kids and hang out with your kids before Change University? Well, I mean, I played and I hung out with them, but it was like when yes. I didn't have anything else to do. Yeah, instead of a priority in your life, right? Yeah. Completely changed the relationship with your kids. What's the impact of that changed relationship, do you think, going to be in their lives? Uh, I, well, I mean, I can tell right now. It's, it's um, like, for instance, unfortunately, um, my uh, son's great-grandfather uh, passed away last Thursday. Mm, sorry about and, that. Yeah, and, and I was... I mean, I, you know, my wife and I discussed how we were going to handle the conversation. And um, because she had them, and I was in the hospital at the time it happened too, so I mean, I couldn't be there um, the day that it happened to the, the day of the conversation. And, uh, you know, she explained um, she explained to Ezra what had happened. Uh, Ezra, you know, come up to me uh, uh, the next day afterwards. He's like, Dad, did you hear? Uh, do you know about Pat Paul? And I was like, well, can you tell me? He said, Pat Paul's with Jesus. I said, well, baby, do you miss him? You said, yeah, I miss him. You said, but everything's going to be okay. <laughs> and uh, and so it's, uh, you know, I was very thankful because that was a conversation that my wife and I had had that, that like this was, that this was where the bar is. This is what we're both going to be consistently able to talk about. But um, uh, Ezra's asked me questions that he has not asked his mom. And um, 
it's been rough for me to try to, you know, talk to him. Not because I didn't know what to tell him. It's just to, how do you explain this to an almost four-year-old? Yeah. But I know that had it not been for this program, I probably would have just – I wouldn't have been as, as empathetic about the situation as I would have been. You wouldn't have been psychologically safe is our term. Yeah, I would, yeah exactly. I wouldn't have been – I would have been a safe point to go ask questions or. And as a result, unintentionally, you might've been inducing trauma yeah. into that child's life that would carry on to their adult life. Which would just, because it was like, because of what was done to me, you know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's all you knew. Right. But you're, bre right. you're breaking generational curses. Yes. That's what this is really about, isn't it? Yeah, it is. If we were to just, get down to the core it's really about making sure that the pain that you're going through your kids will never have to experience that's absolutely correct wow well we've been on this call for a long time told you we're gonna have fun minutes what's that i said it feels like it's just been 10 minutes i know i know well we this isn't one of our wise counselors she says write down your altars of remembrance and these are significant moments in your life when God has moved. Okay. This this interview is intended to be an altar of remembrance for you. Okay. A way to look back and say, look at the times that God moved in my life through these past six to nine months. Right? So that when life gets tough, you can go back and say, wow. Wow. God moved then and he's going to move now too. Right? Right. So, um, Daniel, any kind of final comments before I ask my favorite question? Uh, ben, I just want to just repeat that Dame said, congratulations, I'm proud of you. Um, I've, I've watched you, I've watched you progress from where you were to where you're at now. I, and I just see the, I see the growth in you and I see the potential We've talked about it, Ben, and I, I'm just excited on what the Lord's going to do in your life moving forward. I'm excited to see what he's going to do through you and your children's lives and your ministry. And it's all because you were obedient, Ben. You took that step of faith. You stepped out of the boat. And, brother, I just watched you. I've watched you walk on water, and I'm, I couldn't be more proud of you. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. So, so, Ben, now here's my favorite question. Actually, I don't think I've ever asked this question. I think, hmm, I've never asked it. I've never asked it this way. So I'm going to ask the question, Ben. Okay. So, Ben, for all of the pastors that are watching this now and in the future, pastors, if you could recommend one thing to these pastors that were in the position that you were in a while ago. Just one thing, what would it be? I would tell them they need to find their Jonathan. Can you explain that a little bit more? Oh yeah, I'd, I'd love to go into that. Um, from a historical, historical scripture, um, scripturally historical background and context, there's one man within the entirety of scripture that was uh, named as having um, uh, having the heart after God, and that's King David. Yep. And we see all throughout the Psalms, or at least the Psalms we know for sure that he was the one that he wrote. Others that are you know suggested that he was the one that wrote them. We see all throughout the Psalms he talks about how high and how low things are, but yet he never takes his eye off of God. But David also, when we talk about from a historical standpoint, when he was in the midst of a lot of the struggles trying to run from cave to cave, hiding from King Saul, who was trying to execute him. Um, David had one person or, or, or one, like uh, another man that he could, mm. talk somebody mm. that he, could, um, uh, would, he knew that would be standing there with him. And it was his friend, Jonathan. Mm. And so what I, as a pastor, would, I mean, this is to anybody, but especially to a pastor, I would recommend that you find your Jonathan. Because if you try to do this alone, you're going to stumble. But if you're if 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 what you're doing is for the glory of God and you've got your Jonathan standing there next to it, locking arms with you, raising shields with you, you, you won't fall. Hmm. That's pretty powerful. That's pretty, fall. 
that's pretty powerful. Is it fair to say that Daniels played that role and Change University's played that role in your life? He has. He has. Dan, uh, Dan and I have now gotten to the point where our, our conversations are no longer just uh, coach to client conversations. I mean, it, it, even even before I graduated this program, our conversations were starting to make the shift from closer client to to uh, brothers in Christ conversations because we, we I just called a check in on him or something, you know, just a, a simple five ten minute conversation that turns into almost a two and a half hour conversation. We just shoot the breeze, but you know, wow. it's, it's a, it is yeah, it's spiritual stuff like that. That's pretty powerful, and and Daniel, if you relied on that voice in your head that said you just can't do this, you don't have time, where would Ben be right now? God had a purpose for me to be that man in Ben's life, to be that Jonathan, and if, you know, God called me to do it. It was my, you know, I had to be obedient and make that choice. I don't know what Ben would be if I wasn't available. Uh, you know, would, would, would Ben would have trusted somebody else? I don't know. I don't know what would happen. I just know that I know that God called me. I obeyed. God called Ben. He obeyed. And here's the fruit on the tree. Here's the fruit. The fruit's in front of all of us to see. Yeah. And, and we talk about this often in coaching 101. We say, what's the, f what is the fruit of an apple tree? <laughs> More trees, the whole vineyard. Multiple Vin trees. Vineyard. Multiple. Vineyard. Yep. Ben, I can foresee a day when you and Dan are on this call with the clients, and I pray pastors, that were where you were, and you're there, Jonathan. I see that day. I look forward to that day. Because God brought you to this place for a reason. You have a story that can inspire pastors that are struggling. You can be there, Jonathan. What an awesome, awesome blessing and an outcome. Yeah. I got to tell you, three and a half years ago, when I started this thing, <laughs> I had no idea that that vision would be coming to pass. None. But I look forward to walking with you through this journey, my friend. I'm so proud of you. So... So let's get there, <clears throat> folks. If you're a, if you're at a place in your life where you're saying, you know what, the buck stops with me. The buck stops with me. My family's future is dependent on me making a decision now that's going to change myself so that I can change them and change generations. If that's where you are but you don't know how to do it just like ben didn't know how to do it don't waste any more time jump on this call i got the link sharing here jump on the call and one of my coaches who has been where you're at right daniel yes sir not a salesman not an expert salesman but one of my coaches who has been where you are at is going to call you and they're going to say been there done that I know how hard it is, but you don't have to stay there. We can help you. We're going we're gonna to walk with you, and Ben, you no longer have to be alone. Take the courage. Schedule that call. I promise you. I promise you this decision. You'll never regret it. You'll never regret it. So with that, Daniel, could I ask you to pray? And we will, we will say goodbye to everybody. Father, we love you so much, and we thank you for this call. We thank you for this time. I thank you for our brother Ben who made that decision, and he made a commitment, and he, Lord, he followed through on his word, and you gave him that strength, he, the man of integrity, to follow through, to seek the healing in his life, not just for himself, but for the generations to come. I pray, Lord, that what was spoken here today will influence the many, the many men that see this video, that they're able to watch this and see that change in their life is possible. It's just, it's more than possible. It's just sitting there waiting for them to accept it. And Lord, I just pray and ask that the Holy Spirit would move in the lives of the people that watch this video and allow them to seek out the help and the change for themselves. And Lord, that I pray that you would 
to allow them to feel surrounded by men of God to, to pour into them and help them. And I thank you, Lord, for the obedience of Damon to how he was moved by the Holy Spirit to start this program and how it motivated me to change in my life and how now it's motivating Ben and many more men just like him. Lord, I just thank you so much. I can't even say thank you enough for what you've done and what you'll continue to do. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everybody. Take care.